Welcome back to the garden, guys. This is the first episode, first interview on the women's segment. We are here with my good friend, Caitlin. Thank you for having me. Of course. I'm super stoked you're here. This is very surreal. It's very gorgeous. You nailed the design. I love, I can't say enough about yeah. these chairs. Thank they you. Just, they fit your like demeanor. Yeah. yeah. Your inner soul, you know. The... That was the goal. I want it to have elegance and grace yes. and over-dramatized sophistication. I love it. Yeah. It fits. Thank you. Yes. So... Are you excited to be here? I am so excited to be here. So yeah. as you know, I am, of course, as your friend, one of your number one fans. I'm always rooting for you and Chris, and I've loved to be better since the beginning, you know? So I'm very flattered to be here. It's super exciting. This is not something I would normally ever expect. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm super grateful that you're here. Um, you have been super supportive since the beginning, and with the amount of people in our lives who have a negative energy, towards everything going on, your support has really meant a lot. Oh, thank you. No, you're such a good oh friend. How could I not support your dreams? Like, How am I already getting emotional so soon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm so glad to be here, though. But thank you. Yes, I'm yeah. so honored. Uh, forewarning, we are medicated. <laughs> so I, I'm a little all over the place. While we were standing outside medicating, <laughs> I was thinking that I absolutely adore you. Our friendship started <laughs> with hotboxing your car. Yep. Yep, after a bad day. After a bad day, yeah. And we both had a bad day without even knowing each other. Right. And we met and connected over having a bad day. Right. <laughs> and then we've just been positive ever since to each yeah, other. Really. I our, love it. <laughs> our relationship has blossomed from a very beautiful seed. Right, yeah. I'll take that bad day for this friendship <laughs> anytime, man. Right. Any fucking time, yeah. Go through that da bad it's day all it. over again. Yeah. <laughs> And I was thinking outside while we were, can I say smoking? While we were smoking, I was thinking that you give me the energy of like gothic cottage core, <laughs> oh, like dark you. fairy. <laughs> I, I will heal you with the herbs that I have homegrown. They're homegrown with love. Love of I can my tell. pettiness sometimes. <laughs> 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 yeah, I love that. And you make a lot of homemade things too which i really appreciate you brought in homemade bread with apple butter with the apple and butter we fed the birds we did feed the birds yeah. there were rabbits out there there were rabbits that was a good day too that was we, a really good day we were living our best disney princess moment yeah i swear that one was just called to you yeah, yeah. that was yeah. it was a disney princess day it was lovely <sighs> yeah so with your home skills and the bakings and whatnot do you feel that's kind of prepped you for the housewife thing you've been doing lately? Um, I think that the whole point that I learned how to cook mm -hmm. was with the goal of being a wife one day. That was the whole reason I wanted. I learned how to cook because of my grandmother. She was a Southern Baptist preacher's wife. Mm -hmm. And that kind of led her to portray that role. And she did it so well. And he appreciated her. Like he truly, he needed her and she needed him. Right. And they just worked so powerfully as a team mm -hmm. that it really made me like, okay, how can I get to the point where I can bring that to the table one day for my best friend so that I can fully live out that teamwork? Because I'll never be the one who's able to, oh, I can't cut the grass, man. I can't, oh. you know what I mean? There's, there's some things oh. that I might be a strong, independent woman, as I've always joked. Yeah. But I don't want to fucking do that, man. I mean, in Florida, yeah, especially. Not in Florida, no. no. Um, so seeing how, like, he did that terrible task for her, and she always made sure that she had his favorite meal on the table every Saturday morning or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. was really, it was nice to see that teamwork. There's a lot of love in that, too. Oh, God, yeah. I bet there were times where she was just so exhausted and was like, I don't want to stand in front of the stove for three hours today. Yep. And she did it anyway because he's out there cutting the grass after working a whole day, not wanting to do it. Yep. Yeah. They did have a lot of that, especially because she, she had three children. So I have to imagine back when they had those three children, there was an AC. They lived in a boxcar at one point. So like 
they were broke broke they had to pump their own water from a well and things of that nature so she overcame all those obstacles to make sure that he had a hot meal at the end of the day and not only did she do that when she was 20 she did that when she was 70 you know what i mean like there was never a day where she didn't at least offer to cook she might have had days where she didn't cook Mm -hmm. but she offered to cook and I thought that that was incredible. I felt like that was yeah. really. I want to grow up to be a grandma. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. No, she was the sweetest <laughs> little southern peach in the world. I love that energy. <laughs> so you want to talk about your newly married? I always want to talk about my newly okay. married. Okay. So where do we want to start with it? <laughs> um, that I'm so glad and so thankful that someone got to witness me fall in love. I've never had like a best friend get to like be there through the entire stumble trip and fall and be captured you know what I mean because it was like that for me and I've never had a relationship like that to begin with so the fact that it went so smoothly Mm -hmm. was really nice and I'm glad you got to be the one who witnessed me like get heart-shaped eyes when he first walked in kind of moment yeah I could feel the vibrations of the butterflies (laughs) just radiating into the universe from you yeah (laughs) They're still there, too. It's crazy. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I still get goosebumps when he, like, rubs my shoulder as he walks by or, you know, just because. And he'll do that. Since I work completely remote now, mm-hmm. he'll come into the office before he leaves for work and he'll rub my shoulders and he'll kiss the top of my head and he leaves. And we don't have to exchange a single word because I might already be on a call or doing something. But he does it every day because he knows how much it means to me. Not, you know what I mean? I'm sure that he also appreciates it, but I've told him those are the two actions that stick in my mind for how good you are at caring for me. And it just really makes the difference. That is so much communication. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so much communication in that. There is the, <laughs> the set boundary, not the boundary, but the set expectation or maybe the emotional need. The emotional need is made known. And there's the follow through on his end to make you happy. And now both of you understand that that is a nonverbal way to communicate. I'm leaving. I love you. Yep. How long have you guys been together? So we got married after only like two months of officially dating. Okay. So that was a very quick marriage. And neither Mm -hmm. one of us have ever been married before. And we both kind of joked because neither one of us ever thought we'd get married we both had always joked about like dying alone and stuff Mm -hmm. and not because I'm like Mm -hmm. cruel to love or anything like that but I'm 30 I started getting a little nervous (laughs) I know I know 30 is not old I know it's not old stop you're (laughs) you did not just tell me you're like coming out of the maiden age and (laughs) (laughs) well I haven't found a suitor I might as well settle as the town witch like (laughs) I mean you are prepared for it though you have all the herbal knowledge and Holistic oh, why do you healing. Think I was I was practicing my my herbalism. <laughs> I love that you were prepared for multiple futures. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always this is have definitely the better future though. I'm glad yeah. that things rolled out how they did. And right. I did. I waited. I waited mm-hmm. until someone met not just one of my expectations, but everything that I felt I needed to complete my team. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to be this powerful team with someone. I needed someone that I knew would fit that role perfectly. And the crazy part is he's fit that role in everything that I've needed and things that I never knew I could have wanted. Okay. And so I really think that it is important, like, okay, yep, 30 is not that old, but I don't have children. So what if I wanted to marry someone who did want children? You know what I mean? Like, I needed to be young enough to still feel like I could offer what needed to happen in their lives because I respect that. Some people need whatever. Right. Whatever. But... I was getting worried. I was getting worried about my age and still Mm -hmm. being single. Um, But I wasn't going to settle. You know what I mean? There wasn't ever going to be. I'd rather never get married than settle for someone who didn't see my potential. I love the self-worth that you have for yourself. (laughs) Thank you. It it means a lot to you to know that you're not willing to put up with just anybody's behavior because you want to be loved. Yeah, no. Would you say that, you know, you being in your 30s and having dated, you are in a mindset to know what you want in life and you were able to spot it so quickly in your now husband? I think so. Yeah, I do yeah. think that that helped. I, but I, I'm sure that I, well, I guess I can't say I'm sure, but I would hope that if I would have seen him when I was 20, I would have seen that man's great potential from that moment. Yeah. Like, I like to think that in my soul, I just, I saw 
what a kind loving respectful intelligent human he was mm -hmm. and i knew that that was the jackpot you know what i mean like yeah. so i hope that it's not just because i'm a little bit older so i had time to date around I think I just got a fucking hell of a catch, you know? Yeah, yeah I think yeah. you both lucked out on that. You <laughs> oh, both thank um, you. bring a lot of things to the table that you are now building together. Thank you. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to applaud you. You are softly aggressive in your pursuit of him. <laughs> I, <was. laughs> I respected the fuck out of that. <laughs> I, yeah, I, um, I'm very shy in case... You have I did not. I did not think you were. No, you don't. You don't. No. Oh, I think you made it known very well. <laughs> With him, I did. You yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. Certainly, I, there was no. I pursued beating what around I the bush yeah. and <laughs> hoping maybe he sees you. No. No. You were very much. I'm fucking here, and I'm looking at you. Look back at me. And I love that you got to witness it yeah. because I would run the game plan by you. I would be like. <laughs> By the way, I just walked around him very closely and scratched his back as I did so, mm -hmm. so that he could feel my nails, and I planted that seed, you know? So, like, I did. What a I was, smart seed, I was aggressive. <laughs> Men like getting their back scratched. They do, right? Well, I, that was my thought. I was like... <laughs> there are times where Chris will be, like, in the kitchen doing whatever, maybe putting a dish in the sink or brushing his teeth in the bathroom, and I'll come up and start scratching his back, and he always does, like, a little... You can tell yeah. it's like it's doing the thing. Yeah, he lifted <clears throat> that weight. Right, that comfort. Yep. Yeah. I love that. So, you guys got married two months <clears throat> after meeting? Yes, but not after a ton of communication. Mm. And one of the things that I think really did help, and I'm not just like blowing smoke here. Uh, see what I did there? I did. But... <laughs> <laughs> I did. But... I think that you really saw the potential and that really helped me have that aggression with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that did help. You said you had a lot of conversation. Oh. What did that look like for you guys? So one of the things that we did talk about, mm -hmm. that's another point I was going to. Thank you so much. You read my mind, girl. Um, your list. We really sat down and we communicated our list of, okay, so... I'm more than happy to do the dishes, the laundry, the cooking, all of that. I'm happy to do all of that. But I do expect you to always take out the trash. I do expect you to always cut the grass, you know what I mean? Or pay someone to cut the grass if that's whatever. That's fine. That's one of the fields of responsibility for you is what is outside of the home. Right. You know, we just had I more so than him because he wasn't big on it at first, but it was actually me who was like, nope, this is what I like. Mm -hmm. From witnessing my grandmother, I saw how well that team would work with the traditional kind of gender roles. And I'm one who enjoys the traditional gender roles. So I kind of pushed it on him at first and it's just, it's worked for us really well. Like I am so relieved that it has worked so well and I've been able to relax and be that soft, feminine, cottage core virgin of myself that oh. I like to try to be, you know? Mm -hmm. So it is, it's been nice to have his support. I love all of that for you. Thank you. <laughs> so those conversations of, I'll do the dishes, I'll maintain the house, you have to maintain everything outside of that. Was that before you guys moved in together? It was. Okay. So we didn't move in together until the day we got married. Oh, was that by design? <laughs> yeah, that was. That was by design. Okay, elaborate on that. Yeah. Um, so since we got together so quick and everything, we really, yeah, we had a ton of dates. We had a ton of time, especially talking. We had talked so much for mm -hmm. so long. I'm going to pause you and interrupt yeah. you. If this is too personal, let me know. <laughs> Did you guys wait to have sex? <laughs> That is a good question. No, he proposed right after the first time we had sex, though. <laughs> so that was that made me feel nice. Yeah, I got Holy a ring shit. out of it. <laughs> like, no way. Yeah, that made he me He got feel out of bed good. and was like, yep, locking this shit down. Down on one knee at all. Ooh. Yeah, melt my heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was nice. That was I cute. really feel like this is some romance novel type shit. It has been. And it's. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pin it all on the fact that you guys have communicated so well about what you want in life and going forward. I am so thankful for our communication. Yeah. I really think that, you know, without that, this could have been a lot of the other relationships where 
oh, so we do have our flaws. Like, mm-hmm. there's a language barrier sometimes. And so... What well, is his first language? Sure. Um, he's from Panama, so his first language is Spanish. Okay. Um, but his English is excellent, you know, mm-hmm. so there's never, like, any delay in communication between us but more so that that only comes into play in the fact that a lot of times he'll take calls from back home and he'll speak spanish and i have no idea what he's talking about because i don't speak any spanish um you know what that means right what you're gonna have to start learning spanish he's teaching me okay he is he's and he's doing so kindly at teaching it like i have tried many times to learn spanish with absolutely no luck yeah and he's been very kind and it feels like spoon feeding a baby because I'm just I, I keep teasing him that I'm just parroting it. I don't mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just being a parrot right yeah. now. But it's progress. That's going to get there. I, yeah. And I love him so much that I want to learn mm-hmm. his first language so that that way when I go home to visit with his family and things, I can communicate with them as well. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But with the phone calls. Mm-hmm. So old Caitlin would have been like, oh, man. I hate that I have no idea what they're talking about right now. Like they could be talking about anything in the world and I could get self-conscious about it. But because we communicate so efficiently, I never have to ask him anything. Mm -hmm. I'm never like, Oh, who was that? I don't have to be. He always just is like, Oh, by the way, that was such and such. I'm excited to do such and such. There's never a delay in it's like he can read what I'm thinking in that Mm -hmm. sense because he does. He openly communicates anything and everything so I've never had a shadow of a doubt he will take showers and leave his phone unlocked and I've never once felt the need or desire to go through it right you know what I mean like there's just there's no second thought about anything with him and it's so nice that it's so effortless because of the communication yeah a lot of people would say that him going out of his way to tell you every single time he has a phone call who it is and what's it about is he doesn't have that many phone calls no (laughs) right (laughs) it's not that frequent Um. (laughs) But people could say that that could be seen as like almost a controlling thing or overbearing in a way. I would say that's a way to build trust, especially because you guys got married two months after meeting. Yeah. You are still on that road of building trust with one another. Yeah. And that is something we've talked so much about. Yeah. Um, In the very beginning of our relationship, he was like, look, I'm not a mind reader. I haven't had very many long relationships. So I really want, if you ever have any thought or any second doubt or any feeling about anything, talk to me. Mm -hmm. Just tell me. Just communicate with me because I'm not going to read your mind. And don't don't tell me to speak my mind if you don't actually want it. I have been very open with every single thought that's crossed my mind. I tell him everything. He's my best friend. Mm -hmm. He's my favorite person in the world. I'm happy to hey, by the way, I don't like it when you leave the toilet seat up. You know what I mean? Like I can communicate anything and not feel like, oh, I'm just a bother to him because he invited that freedom of speech to tell him how things affect me, even no matter how petty or small it is. And that's the crazy part. Sometimes I'll be like, I'm being a little much right now with this (laughs) and I'll still communicate it to him and he'll never make me feel petty about it. There's never a moment where he's like, no, that's stupid. Like, no. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I can see why you felt that way. But really, it's this. And it's perfect. Makes perfect sense. I get it now. There and was it- so much in what you just said. <laughs> I got to hang on. I got to process Sorry. and Sorry. break it down. So there's a difference between saying, hey, babe, I don't like it when you leave the toilet seat up versus, you know, I go to the bathroom after you. Why would you leave the seat up? Oh, yeah. The approach means everything. And the fact that you have shown him that small things like that are not going to turn into a massive argument because of his lack of consideration or his selfishness or misogyny, oh, yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> there is a, there's a safety in that kind of communication. You also said, oh, fuck, what did you say? What else did you say? I said a lot of things. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> Touching on the bathroom thing, mm-hmm. moving on. Uh, that I feel safe about. to communicate even how petty it is. Like, <laughs> yes. Life's stupid. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> communicating that pettiness is a big deal. It is a window into where your mental is. 
it's a window into how you have lived your life. It is communication of, I do this a lot. I will preface with, I know my feelings are logical right now, or I know this thought is illogical. So when I say those things, when I say that specifically, it is to make known that I am just communicating this fear, the feeling, the thought, the insecurity. Mm-hmm. It's not all consuming. It's yep. intrusive thought. That's right? exactly it. And him never shaming you or belittling, belittling you or putting you down. There's just an ebb and flow that comes with it. It's so beautiful. And I love that you fucking have this in your life. It's so refreshing. Uh, it is. It's nice. I'm, it's like really hitting me now. And I'm, I'm traveling away from the marriage conversation. What else did we talk about standing outside? Oh, I want to hear more about Vegas. What was oh, your favorite Vegas. part? Oh, gosh. Okay. In Vegas. Um, I had a lot of favorite parts. My favorite part of the whole thing was being able to experience all of it with my husband. I love that. That, that, yeah. that was the dopest thing. Uh, one of the... There are so many points that stick out to me. One of my favorite experiences <laughs> is not something you would expect from somebody who just came back from Vegas, but we were walking in the desert. Well, I was walking in the desert, and um, I was looking at the sand, and I was like, oh, it's so gorgeous out here. And I patted my pockets, and I was like, no, I didn't bring a baggie. <laughs> So I was like, okay, just just absorb the sand, like yeah. really enjoy it, take it all in. And I was walking and I was trekking and I was like seeing little lizards skitter about. And I was like, I really, really like this sand. Like it's not just sand. This is I get it. rocks that have been worn down and trampled on and wind and history. This is millions of years underneath my feet. I put sand in my pocket. I love that. A lot of it. <laughs> love that I totally get it I I texted Chris and I was like um just so you know I have sand in my pocket and he was like okay forgot your bags and I was like yep (laughs) I love that level of support right yes no I love that (laughs) and it was in that moment of me texting my husband like and I felt like a thief doing it like I squatted down and I was like sneakily I had it wasn't sneakily <laughs> I was wearing my uh workout pants and I had my pocket open it was a deep pocket I mean like yeah. up to Ooh, mid forearm lots deep. of sand pocket. and I'm scooping it and I'm just like oh, oh and I hear people coming and I'm like scooping it faster <laughs> and I'm like I gotta get enough <laughs> And, like, I stand up and, like, I pretend I'm taking pictures and shit. <laughs> I pretend. And Your pictures turned out beautiful. Thank they you. They were gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and they continued on. And I'm feeling the sand in my pocket. I'm like, this, this isn't enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I squatted back down a second time. And I continued scooping sand in my pocket. And I heard more people coming. And I was like, I can't. I can't stop. <laughs> so I, I scooped sand in my pocket as people were walking by. And nobody said anything. And I stood up and I dusted my what, hand off. What do you say? What what could you even say to <laughs> be in that situation? You don't say anything. You act like you don't visualize it. You just look um, into the distance. <laughs> like, <laughs> just ignore her. Yeah, yeah. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> and then, um, oh, I saw petroglyphs while I was out there. Ooh. Right. They were dated 500, uh, 1100, 500 to 1100 AD, whichever way that goes. I yeah. I remember which way. So old as fuck. Yeah. And I love just looking at things like that and absorbing it and taking it in because that's our history. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, Do you have the sand? I can, can I see the sand sometime? Yes, you okay, can. I will be bringing the sand in. I love that. Okay, good. I, I am meaning to put it into a jar. It is still in a Ziploc baggie. Can I help you with that? Yeah, of course. Can we create a little terrarium with it? And that way it could continue providing... It's up to you. You don't have to. I get it. This is important sand. Yes. This isn't just normal sand. Yes, we have to do that because that's the right thing to do. It's selfish of me to say, no, I want to put it in a jar just for me to look at it. No, that's fair. You deserve sand if that's what you want. I deserve nothing. (laughs) (laughs) So we will continue the cycle with the sand. Okay. I love that. Yeah. We'll build a nice little ecosystem in it. It will. It'll be nice. Let's see what else. Oh, we went to a wax museum. Oh, really neat. Was um, it well done? 
Very well done. Ooh. Uh, celebrities are shorter than I thought they would be. Are they? Well, yeah. you're very, like, tall. You are, like, model tall, you know? So Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in heels. Um, if those are to scale, mm-hmm. I am taller than Channing Tatum, oh. which I did not expect. No, but I love that. That's a good right. fun fact. That's a, I'm He's also the next tiny Tom Cruise then kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also taller than Leonardo DiCaprio, mm-hmm. uh, Johnny Depp. Oh, I'd heard about them being short. Yeah. Yeah. I was just shocked because in movies, the way they film things is. Oh, because you know, men are only desirable if they're tall. Crazy. Fucking media man <laughs> oh my god that is wild um oh chris stood on a, a wrecking ball in front of miley cyrus i love that yeah I she's not in that. the photo but she was behind the wrecking ball that was the point much. of it yeah yeah um one of the greatest things i've ever seen was that man on a wrecking ball i love that yeah, yeah. i loved it too <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else this might sound um what's the word i'm looking for self-centered surface level i don't know but walking around vegas uh it felt really good to dress nice for my husband yes yeah no i love that yeah absolutely that was a highlight for me that's such a proud moment yeah because you're so proud of him Mm -hmm. so the fact that you get to be also a prize yeah it's nice it's fun i like being his arm candy yes absolutely <laughs> let's see i haven't thought about vegas really since we've been back so i'm trying to <laughs> bring it all to the forefront we haven't had a day off in almost two weeks that doesn't surprise yeah. me in the slightest i always start all my texts to chris with hey i know you guys are super <laughs> busy but and then insert whatever my random question is yeah because i do i I absolutely get to see it firsthand. Yeah. You guys don't stop. I don't know how you do it together. And I've wondered that before. Do you guys ever get exhausted and kind of snippy? You know what I mean? Just out of that exhaustion? Um, Out of the exhaustion? No. I would say that we very rarely ever get snippy with each other. And when it does happen, it's on a rough mental day. Yeah. Like the floodgates are open and we're trying to block that shit up. So yeah. it's kind of like a autopilot and it's always caught in the moment and apologize for. Yeah. That's huge that you recognize it yeah. right away. Yeah. We try to. That's awesome. We try to. And if we don't catch it in the moment and it gets brought up by the other party, it's always a, it's always received with, um, with, with the fact that there's love behind it. Yeah. We never get defensive about it. It's always, oh, shit, like I didn't realize. Yeah. That's awesome that you can see that in each other and can see like, oh, they're not mad at me. Mm -hmm. They are frustrated. They are exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, there are days where we're both just absolutely tired. And on those days, we just accept that we're tired. There's not Mm -hmm. a lot of conversation happening. It's get shit done so we can get home and relax together that's powerful yeah on days where one of us is down and the other one is like they slept good and breakfast was right just days fucking going Mm -hmm. great we pick up on areas where the other one needs help on just to get the day to go better yeah it's the teamwork that i that i've always wanted in life Mm -hmm. it's nice that is what was the question you wanted to ask me about going to Vegas? Oh, yes. Okay. I am, and I want to phrase this correctly. Okay. I am self-conscious enough that sex work makes me a little nervous. Okay. I know that sex work is completely legal in Vegas and many establishments. And I know that they, like, hand out business cards that are just, like, naked women. Like, everywhere there's just naked women. And I feel like my self-conscious self would be so insecure walking those streets surrounded by these women who literally their sexuality is so powerful they sell you know like I so just... a couple of things that I noted in Vegas they are not as sought after as they are made out to be on social media like the girls walking on the yeah. strip just wearing pasties and a thong with whatever extravagant yeah feathery thing yeah that's totally what i'm visualizing it was a lot of 
we were sitting at a red light and red lights, the traffic on the strip's absolutely insane. So I was able to watch one girl for maybe five or 10 minutes. And I counted roughly every time a group walked past there was between 20 and 30 people. In that five minute time frame, not a single person stopped to take a photo with her. Oh, wow. So they make money doing it, of course. Yeah. It also depends on what time you're on the strip. Two, three o'clock in the morning, people have some alcohol in them. Yeah. That's when they're really going to start making bank. Rowdy, yeah. Um, with Chris and I walking around, 